Hello everybody and welcome back to Animal Crossing New Leaf. Welcome Amiibo! I have mail from Lobo. Steven, how you been? Anybody want to say I respect you and think you're usually dependable? Hope we're friends forever. That's all. Stop reading from Lobo. Thanks, man. Lobo's being really kind lately. I'm worried he's thinking about moving away. Ah! Uh, need to fix my inventory. Um... Ooh, Phineas! Oh, good morning to you, youngster. The morning breeze in the forest is most agreeable today. May I have a badge, Phineas? I want a badge. Let's see what kind of badge best suits me. He sees Arka Kark. He's, I've developed a hev uh, healthy interest in the stock market. Can I handle something as complicated as that? Is no easy task, as this old man can tell you. I've got the perfect badge for you. Keeping good, the badge won't bring a new badge. I got the Amateur Turnip Trader Badge! It shows I've been actively buying and selling turnips. Neat! Any more badges? Being good, I'll bring you a new badge. I will keep being good. And I do actually have a, a ramble topic basically picked out today, based on basically a disagreement. I can't really call it an argument, it was more just a disagreement between me and one of my siblings. That I had earlier this morning. And that is, what do you consider to be a loot box? Because I can almost guarantee you, whatever you just thought of when I said what do you think a loot box is, isn't what the law thinks a loot box is. And this is actually a really good example point I can give. This rock, this rock contains a random gem. I just got a sapphire. I could have gotten gold. That's a loot box. That rock is a loot box. Now, some people define loot boxes as things you need to pay money in which to open. Well, you have to pay money to play Animal Crossing. Sapphire has completed its much-anticipated new fountain! And we even got on this topic because Spain is proposing... Well, basically has all but passed the law, a law, that would ban loot boxes. Their law goes a step further, though, and basically only bans them if you have to pay money for them. If you do not have to exchange real currency, it's fine. But the problem is, as I just made mention of, that's an incredibly broad definition when you think of the legal definition of a loot box. The legal definition of a loot box is just basically a random mechanic that gives a prize with a set percent chance of giving you various prizes. Basically, a slot machine. And basically every game makes use of these mechanics. The more countries push for laws banning loot boxes, the higher the chance, and I will talk to our villagers in a moment, as I want to continue this ramble, the higher the chance that some country, well, some lawyer, is going to have the idea that, you know, this law could apply to more than just the loot box. And that's going to lead to, basically, games themselves probably getting banned. If they contain any sort of random mechanic. And you might be wondering, like, well, what would that entail? Well, the money rock. This is a random mechanic. Some days you get good luck with the money rock. Some days you don't. It's random. You have no control over what you are going to get from the money rock. And, like, purely, they're going to get to that point. Because games companies are going to keep pushing the line. 
Like, they're going to keep pushing it and seeing just how far they can go before they end up getting told to stop. Because, like, and th this is an example I'd, I had given to my sibling of, like, okay, he and I both play World of Warships, so he has an understanding of these mechanics. I know a lot of you guys don't play it, but I will do my best to explain them. In World of Warships, there is a currency called Research Bureau Points. You earn these points by resetting tech trees. Carlos, I was rambling. Alas, there you are, hun. I need, to fill, uh, I need my fill of hun every now and then. Hey, hun. Can I, uh... Just want to get a good look. I mean, if you want to go right now, then sure. I'm, I mean, I might still be playing them, but I don't know. It, it don't work for me. But, like, you can only get these research bureau points by resetting tech trees. Basically meaning, you get the tier 10 of the line, and then you click a button that says reset, it gives you... It basically automatically sells all of the ships and sets you back to the tier 1. You now have to grind that tech tree all over again. In return, you get a bunch of res you basically get as a mission on all of those ships research bureau points. As you play the ship, you get these points. You can then spend those points on getting stuff in the research bureau. None of that process costs money in any way. There is no way to directly pay money to get research bureau points. So if you define loot boxes as things that you that you pay money for, well now all a company like Wargaming has to do is move all of their loot boxes into the research bureau and then ta-da, you can no longer directly pay money for them. Note I said directly. You can still pay money to convert your experience on ships into free experience which you can then use to reset tech trees and also quickly grind up through tech trees sneaky ain't it no money would directly be exchanging hands and they get to keep their loot boxes and that also encourages people to play more, because now, to get the loot boxes, they've got to grind to a tier 10. Hello, Fuchsia. Season the day, huh? Starting off full throttle, too. So, is there something you need for me? What's the latest? Oh, I've heard some rumors about your Sapphire. But it's really true, you got the goods. Do you, do you want it? 2,000? To that, sure, that's more than I'd get from retail. And like, this isn't a concern coming out of nowhere either. Hey, hey it's a dream come true. Thanks, Pookie. Sorry for being so pushy. Like, it's a legitimate concern that a lawyer is going to go, Ooh, I could make some good money doing this. And the problem with it going through the courts is there's no guarantee the judge is going to have any idea what loot boxes are or random mechanics are in video games. Hey, hun. Philip Epps early in the morning. Punches. Want to talk to me? Let's talk. Be a little hungry. I'm in the mood for some fresh room. Not picky. Any kind's fine. I got your back. I think Jeremiah is moving tomorrow. It just occurred to me. Good oh, morning, huh? I can barely keep my eyes open. The sun's too bright, feels like laser shooting directly in my brain, blub. Let's chat. This letter's in your mailbox. Are delivered by a dude named Pete. But he has to get up super early. Sounds rough, blub. It does. But, um... Right, I need to find a fruit. Uh, cherry. Do I have multiple bamboo? I do. Bam. 
But like, it it's not a stretch to assume some lawyer is going to go, ooh, money. And like, with it being in a court, that's going to make this so much harder. And once there's precedent, anywhere can then implement it. Like, we just need the legal precedent to be set. And then... It's over. Not enough, but I want to give you something... Do you just give me a lefty... Everyone's giving me lefty desks. The game knows. Like, it's... It's honestly concerning. Because I don't want video games to die off, but... Quite simply, this is what the anti-video game groups want. And it's probably going to happen. Because, like, the argument that, like, my sibling made was, Oh, well, you know, th these game companies have lots of money for lawyers. Like, yeah, they do. The anti-video game groups have just as much, if not more, money for lawyers. And all it's going to take is them finding a way to get it in front of a judge that's sympathetic to their cause. And it's over. That's all it's going to take. And like, even if you want to make the argument of like, oh, well, you know, paid for loot boxes are evil. Free ones are kind of more evil. If you really think about it. Because, like, think about this for a moment. You have, let's say, a kid. No idea what gambling is. He sees in his cutesy game that he's playing... ...a, a free little box that he can buy with the in-game currency that he can, you know... ...earn pretty easily in-game. He grinds up enough, he buys himself one. Right, I don't need fertilizer anymore. And then he opens it, and his first loot box, he gets something really cool. He gets full of adrenaline. Clones. They're not clones, they're twins. He then wants to go buy another one. And another one. But those next two don't have a good reward, but he knows he just got a good reward. So he buys another one. And another one. And another one. And soon he's playing that game every moment of every day grinding up more in-game tokens so that he can open more loot boxes. Then, once he's older, he's been trained. And now he has money. He has a job. Now he can buy those premium loot boxes with higher drop rates. You heard the rumor that you have an... How much... You're gonna ruin your house, Gabby, but you know what? Go for it. That's now going to be in her house. Like, the free loot boxes are, in my opinion, more insidious than the ones that you have to pay money for. Because the ones you have to pay money for, at the very least, at the very least, that is likely to involve a parent when it involves a kid. The free ones? The kid can do that without their parent even knowing. And as much as I am in the camp of parents should monitor what their kids do online, I can't reasonably expect a parent to try to keep up with every single game their kid plays. I was a kid once. I remember that. I would be playing a different game every day, basically. Because, well, back then there was just that many new MMOs coming out that I could basically play a new one every single day. It was nice. I loved the MMO boom. I really wish we could go back to that. There were so many cool games. Let's get working more on our park as I continue to ramble. I'll obviously give the uh, the ceremony the 
importance it deserves. Of course, I'd attend. Let's head to the site of the ceremony. So, like... It doesn't help that games are getting better at hiding their loot boxes, too. Welcome to the Grand Completion Ceremony for Sapphire's Vital Fountain Project. Thanks for joining us on this momentous occasion. I'm Isabel, and I'll be your host today. Thank you, thank you. You're too kind. Gonna keep this short and sweet, let's jump right in. So we have an incredibly short speech from our very own mayor. Take it away. On to the next project! Well said, mayor. You've quite away with words. Very pleased to locate the item we passed through it earlier. And now, to celebrate the completion of the Public Works project, and all the hard work that made it possible. Ready, set, pop! Yeah! Concludes our ceremony. Yep, Jeremiah has fleas. Where's my bug net? There it is. Give me that flea! You don't need no fleas. My flea! Did you pick it off me? That's why he's saying thanks. Please keep that flea as a present. I feel like he was trying to infect people with fleas is what was going on. Like, it's... Like, the arguments that like, oh, well, loot boxes are fine if they're completely free. Like, honestly, okay, I feel like I should make my stance here pretty clear. I'm in favor of consumer education, not removal of things. I'd rather the consumer be educated than to outright ban something. Okay, let's see if I can do the sandbox. I almost feel like the flower bed would be better, but like I like the idea of the sandbox. Let's do it. Let's go find a place to build. Well, there's a place to build. It's just whether you're going to let me build there. That is the question, Isabel. So, like, I don't want loot boxes banned. I don't want them made illegal. I want there to be sufficient warning and education to the player that it is gambling, that they need to be responsible, that, you know... Games should be rated, you know, 18 plus if they contain loot boxes. You know, that sort of thing. That's what I want. Just mapping all this out really quick. I should have did this beforehand, but... Nope. No. Isabel, I was trying to dig a hole. I was... I mean, it's fine. I don't need to dig that hole. Um... She's probably gonna complain because of the rock being right there. Dwayne is really in the way. I may need to get her a little bit lower. That looks a little high. But that did fill in all of the holes. And it is right by... I actually think I kind of want it a little... ...further over this way. What do you think, Isabel? Man, she's being so much nicer with the sandbox. Yeah, that's a lot better. And that looks right in line with the holes. So, yeah, let's put it right here. Let's go ahead and start the needed preparations. Oh, the sandbox is only 2x2. Two two. 
I thought it was 3x3. Three three. Well, that explains a lot of things. It's probably why she's so much nicer about it. Um... One bell will help. I will fund the entire thing. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, let's fill these in. After this, it's the bench at a clock, and then I'm done. <laughs> There's going to be, like, a little clock just outside the front here, probably around here-ish. So, like, people can see, like, what time it is when they're entering the park, and then, like, there's the light up here, which will be nice for, like, when you're, like, sitting on the bench here, which I might do as the, the tires. I'm still kind of mixed on that. Kathy thinks that the, uh, the tires will look better. So I'll probably go with the tires. If they fit. If Isabel's like a real butt about it, then I I won't, but like I, I don't intend to be like all doom and gloom about all this either. Like I honestly wish rather than banning stuff that they would seek to educate people. But as like the Netherlands has proven and you know the I will, I will preface this by saying this is hearsay. I don't know this for sure. I don't live in the Netherlands. I don't know anyone in the Netherlands. But from what I've heard, a lot of the reason why they banned loot boxes in their country was because the casinos were feeling threatened. You can apparently still see advertisements for casinos and proper gambling everywhere. It's in everybody's face this fish this fish the audacity of this fish i cannot believe the audacity of this little fish pale chub guess he just didn't want to be called chubby I can't blame him. Like, I would not be surprised if that's the motivator in most of these countries that are banning video game loot boxes. It's not that they don't like gambling. They just don't want you gambling, you know, in ways that aren't going to the casino. Like, that's all they really don't want you to do. Like, they want you going to the casino so that, one, they can tax your gambling. And two, so that, you know, the casinos are happy. Because casinos bring in a lot of money by exploiting... I'm just going to say it. People with mental illness. Gambling addiction is a mental illness. And it's a very serious issue that should be taken a lot more seriously than it is. But it isn't because, well, because the big casinos have a lot of money to pay to make sure that you don't say anything. You know, that th this doesn't, you know. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if in the future, if I ever, my YouTube channel ever gets big enough... That I end up getting, like, a cease and desist over what I'm saying now. You know. Which I am also just going to say, if any, if any, like, big gambling company ever does, like, send me, like, a cease and desist or something about this. I think I will have to make a video on that, because that almost sounds like they're admitting to me being right. Um... <laughs> you know? Well, 
But like, ultimately... No, I don't have any room. Um... Do I have a fish I know isn't worth much? Wait. I have flowers. I forget I picked up all these flowers. They're here now. <laughs> well, like, I, I would like to see games acknowledge their random mechanics, their gambling mechanics. And seek to educate the consumer, and also take measures to help their consumers. Rather than outright ban gambling, let's make... let's do some good. You know... A an easy example I can give, because this is something I think everyone knows about. If someone opens more than, let's say, 10 TF2 loot boxes in one given time, that should flag Valve's system to send them a message to be like, Hey, are you, like, doing okay? Here's some resources if you have gambling addiction, like... You know... That would be the ideal solution. Get people help. Don't ban them from doing things. Because, especially... Especially because all banning loot boxes in games does, if you still allow gambling in your country, is push these people into the casinos where they are really being taken advantage of. Like, using World of Warships as a pretty easy example. Like, sure, you could spend, you know, hundreds of dollars on loot boxes, but at least you're getting something out of it. And that just comes down to the user of whether, you know, the monetary value you're getting for the loot boxes you're opening is worth it. For me, like, um, there was two years in a row I bought ten Pan-Asian, um, I think it was Lunar New Year containers. ...in World of Warships. Both times I opened them... ...I ended up getting more value in premium ships... ...than the 10 containers were worth. I won two years in a row. If I were to do that now, I probably wouldn't... ...because I already own all of the premium ships from those containers now. I have no reason to open them anymore. You go to a casino... ...you're not walking out with more money than you walked in with. What is extra today? Shoes. I don't have many shoes. I do have two pairs of these shoes. Like, at the very least, with video games, you tend to get something out of it. With real gambling, all you do is lose money. There is no winning. It's designed to make you lose. Even the most heavily regulated casinos, trying with the, the government coming in and saying, no, it needs to be at least a 60-40 a, a split in the customer's favor. They don't. They're very much still probably 70-30 in the company's favor. Because otherwise, the casino would have to close down. They'd be paying out more than they're bringing in. They have to bring in more than they pay out, or they're a bad casino. It's a business. It's not a charity. Now, I would also, as an ideal solution, I would love to see... You know, price caps be put on random mechanics. You can only pay X amount of money. But even the problem there is these companies will always find a way around it. Because like, using an easy example here of, okay, let's imagine for a moment all loot boxes everywhere get banned. 
like the concept of a loot box, a thing you pay money to access the box to then, you know, get a random loot drop out of it. Well, now all that company has to do, all that game has to do, is take the loot out of the loot box, put it onto a monster's drop table, and then make you pay to access that monster. It's not the loot box anymore. It's a completely different thing now. Like... <laughs> it's that simple. And mostly because I've already heard this argument of, oh, well, that would still be a loot box, but it wouldn't. By definition, that would no longer be a loot box. That's the thing. That's the problem. Hello, Carlos. Lucky you, hun. Feeling well. Uh, Magnum. He's feeling Magnum today. He gave us a, a furniture. Here's a vaulting horse. Got my math wrong anyway. Enjoy the gift. I think he's calling me fat. I don't know how to feel about that, Carlos. I guess I'm heading back to retail to sell this faulting horse. Um. Like, it's. <sighs> It's a very complicated topic. And it's one of those things where I almost feel like I should sit down and do like a proper deep dive breakdown to just point out how silly it is. But at the same time, I know for a fact that there is a lot of people who will defend to the end of time banning of loot boxes. Yet at the same time, don't realize the hypocrisy of defending random mechanics. I mean, like... Just using the example of my sibling, I was basically using examples of Final Fantasy XIV to point out how, like, it in of itself has content that could be described as a loot box. And one of the things was pet drops from raids and stuff. He said, well, it's different, because after a hundred times, you, you're guaranteed a, a result. Like, you're guaranteed the reward. Yeah, after you've spent the time of a hundred runs, which I doubt the average player does more than, you know, five raids a week, because contrary to what a lot of people seem to think, the average gamer spends about five hours a week gaming. Well, now, that's going to take a lot of weeks to even get to the hundred. And that whole time, they're paying money for their subscriptions so that they have the ability to grind for that mount. Or pet, or whatever it is. Like, you're, you see the problem? And then when it does finally drop, if it, dro if it drops as a random loot drop while you're grinding, those hundred runs... You're basically competing against seven other players to obtain the item. Because everyone gets a chance at it. Not just you. So now you're paying money, and everyone's paying money, for the chance of getting this pet. You're paying a subscription fee to enter the casino to gamble. There are some casinos that do that. Only they tend to charge you on a year-by-year -year basis. And also have clauses that basically say that you can't, you know, cancel your subscription without sufficient, you know, knowledge, you know, sufficient warning to them. And, like, usually that also involves a cancellation fee. And they make absolutely sure that you still lose a lot of money. <laughs> they tend to give you a set amount of uh, credit per month. Which you could argue, you know, any game where... You gamble using an in-game currency that you can only earn so much of per month. You know, be that just via time, or just simply you can- or a hard limit. Well, that's- that's your monthly token for your subscription. Like... It's... Video games are built on randomness. 
And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. Like, I do want to make that clear. I'm not saying I'm against random mechanics or even gambling in video games. Um, one of my favorite things in Monster Hunter World was in the Iceborne DLC, basically a giant slot machine that you could, that, that you spent, uh, resources you gathered that were purposely added for using with this machine to get various items. It was like my, it was like the best way of getting potions and just healing items and all that stuff. And it was just kind of fun to do. It gave me something to do between hunts while I waited for whoever I was playing with to finish up whatever they were doing. Like, it's, like, I can't deny it. It's fun. That's why gambling is so addictive. That's why it's a bit of a problem. That's why I want players to be educated and to be offered help rather than just have these mechanics ripped away, leaving people no choice but to go to the casinos. And any one of the mindset of, well, at least the loot boxes are out of the game. You lack empathy. You may want to work on that. Because, as mentioned, as much as, like, sure, World of Warships, everything is kind of expensive. At least you're winning. At least you get something. At a casino, all you do is lose. All casinos do is ruin lives. Someone who has a gambling addiction, who's actually having their life ruined by a video game, would have had their life ruined much faster by a casino, and that casino gives even less of a shit. Like... It's as simple as that. But yeah, that's gonna be it for today. I've been rambling long enough. Let me in know in the comments what you guys think. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? If I didn't finish a thought, but thought I did, let me know, and I'll try to finish my thought in the comments. Um, so yeah. Thank you all very much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you back here tomorrow for more Animal Crossing New Leaf. Welcome, Amiibo. See you all then.